Hey, what's up everybody? Today I just want to do a little video comparing the ICOM R71A to the ICOM R7000 receivers. I did a, another comparison um, a few months ago of the ICOM 8600 receiver and the HF receive part of the ICOM uh, 7300 transceiver. And so um, people like that comparison. So I thought I'd do a 25 year review here on these two radios. I've been having these two for a long time, about 25 years. So it's about time to, uh, to do a review on them. Yeah, so these are long in the tooth, but they both work very well. These are very well-constructed radios. I, I'm going to keep these as long as they keep running. And so um, let's just run through the features of the two and what's the difference. Okay, so the first obvious difference is the R71 is a HF receiver, and the R7000 is a VHF receiver uh, up to 1,000 megahertz, so up to near microwave. Um so that, that's the big difference. Now, today, ICOM puts these two in the same box in the 8600. They did that with 8500. So they reduced two boxes into one uh, with the later radios. But these older ones were excellent for the time. And um, I'm just going to run through some of the features here. And if, I recommend these if you can get these in working condition. Go ahead and get them. Okay, so in 1994, at an Electronic Equipment Bank in Virginia, the R71 HF receiver was 10 uh, one thousand ninety nine dollars. The R seven thousand was twelve sixty nine. The R seven thousand is actually a little bit more sophisticated construction. It's got a variable tracking tuning in the front end uh, that the R seventy one doesn't have. So when you tune this, it tunes the circuits according to a steering voltage that's in there, and and the alignment of that's got to be done by an expert. I have not touched that. And so, but it still works uh, very well. I have these two tuned to the same frequency here because there's a little bit of overlap on the CB area. Um, oops, sorry for the profanity there. That's what you hear on the this frequency. But I can hear CB on both of these. This one's on an HF antenna, but this one's on a disc cone. So they're not, it's not gonna hear CB very well on a disc cone but they do overlap a little bit um, in a frequency coverage down there. So um, the price today, R71 still commands a decent price of three to $600. The R7000 to me, though, is a bargain considering it's a more sophisticated radio. I saw one uh, sold on, on um, eBay for $300. I'd buy those all day long for $300. They really perform well. So let's, um, let's tune in a little something here, a weather station. That's about 60 miles away from me. So, I put this on. Just look at it. Yeah. We're just getting weather stations from all over the place. And this is real typical of this radio. It is just rock solid. It's got this center tuning meter here, too. So, to tell you, if sometimes you'll encounter a station that's off frequency, and um, and with you can chase the frequency and, and tune it in properly here. With this center tuning meter so so that that thing works very well like that um power supply both of these have an internal 120 volt supply now when i got them i tested those but i don't use them because they generate a good bit of heat so i run these on 12 volt dc which is also uh, an option provided you put in a little jumper in the back you don't plug it into the 120 volt ac and I just run them on 12, uh, 12 volt DC. And I run these on the dim setting um, so that the lights don't burn out. Uh, these bulbs have burned out once before and I changed the bulbs. I don't like to change the bulbs. So I just run them on dim. Will, you know, I haven't used the AC supplies in these for since I got them really. Are, is the AC supply going to work? Probably not. And I haven't, you know, haven't powered it up. So they probably won't work. But the secret to these radios longevity is you have to use them. You can't keep them in the closet or keep them in the attic. They're just not going to work. You got to use them all the time. And I'll tell you about a problem I had with mine. Size is the same on both of them. The memories, the R71 has 32, but mine's modified. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. R7000 has 100 memories. So I keep... Opportunity. I keep broadcast stations in here, my favorite broadcast Other stations. Than the Patriots on Fox and some of the other channels. On a particular issue. Do what you got. Like, international. 
but you can put scanner, you know, aircraft frequencies, police, you know, whatever, ham stuff in here and scan them. You can scan all, um, all 100. You can, you can scan part of the 100. You can tell it which ones you want to scan. You can also set up scan limits here and a programmable scan. Now it doesn't, it doesn't, it, do, it doesn't act like a scanner. It'll resume in five seconds, 15 seconds, or it'll stay on the station when it stops. So this doesn't, um, scan like a scanner where the scanner holds and then resumes whenever it uh, is done. This is a timed resume here, but, um, you know, it's not high powered as a, from a scanner standpoint, but it will scan channels. And if you listen to some aircraft from the airport, whatever, it does a really nice job with that. So, um, let's see. Volatile RAM board. Okay. The I, R71 came standard with a volatile RAM board. And what does that mean? The operating parameters of the radio, the band limits and all that are stored on this little board. This is the actual board that came out of this radio. Um, when this battery here quits, these chips are volatile memory. It, this will lose its mind and the radio won't work. It'll become a brick. You had to send it to ICOM to be reprogrammed, a new battery put on this little board and then put back in and then it would work. I have a board in mind from a company called Wilco. I don't know if they're still in business. I see some Wilco boards for sale secondhand. Um, but the Wilco, not only is the board not volatile, but it comes with uh, 32 banks of 32. So the way you switch banks is you push the speech button here. So if I push the speech button, I'm on bank one. If I push the speech button, switch to two here, now I'm on bank two. I don't know what I have in there. But um, anyway, the Wilco board provided 32 banks of 32. So, and it's not volatile. So, um, if, if the battery quits, you put a new battery in and it comes back to life. So that's a good investment. And Wilco made boards for a lot of the ICOM radios of that generation. The 751 had the same kind of board. You could buy a bunch of these Wilco boards, for those old ICOMs and, and get them back going. So, um, that, that's not an obstacle today. You can find that. So in conclusion for HF service, you buy the R71. No question. For VHF, you buy the R7000. There's there's very there's almost no crossover here. If you want to listen to CBers, you buy the HF version because I think um, your the antenna you use on VHF and UHF is not gonna catch the CBers very well. Plus, this has upper and lower sideband. The R7000 has just only single sideband. Well, I never really sorted out. I didn't use it very much. I don't know how it. Uh, distinguishes between the upper and lower sideband. I've used it on two meters, but I can't remember um, what the difference was on why it's only just sideband. So uh, HF, you buy this one. VHF, UHF, you buy this one. Now, this is a 25-year review. I told you about the mods. Oh, the Wilco board. I worked with Wilco on this because they're the frequency limits are, are on that little RAM board. I said, well, can you extend me the frequency, you know, extend me some lower frequencies? So yeah, so the my wheel code board goes from seven kilohertz to 35 megahertz. The actual frequencies in the board are higher than that, but the bandpass filter runs out of gas, so it won't really work above 35. But it will. My, so I may have the only one in the world that that goes above 30 megahertz here with my R71. And I used to listen to Army helicopters on it and all that and FM. So um, so it works very well. So problems in 25 years or more of having these, what problems have I had? Well, the only problem I've had on the R71, the uh, variable capacitor to adjust the upper sideband injection frequency was a little wonky. And once a year, I'd have to go tweak it. And because the upper sideband would be a little bit off frequency. So if you're listening to WWV on, on sideband, the upper side band would be a little bit off. And so, so I went and replaced it with a ceramic variable capacitor and that problem is not gonna happen again. The R7000 had a problem. I wasn't using it every day. And it would take 10 minutes of warm up before the, the, um, the frequency synthesizer would start generating a frequency and the radio would, would uh, work. So, um, but then, about seven years ago, I started using this thing every single day and that problem fixed itself. It never did it again. 
uh, after several months of using this thing every day, letting it warm up and letting it fix itself, it fixed itself permanently and it never uh, became a problem again. So barring that little problem with this radio, there's been no problems with it other than changing the memory battery. The memory battery quit after you know 25 years. I changed that and, and the memories were fine. So this has not been a problem. So these things are well made. There's recap kits for them. I haven't recapped either one of these. They say the power supply, the DC-DC converters for the displays need to be changed. These are the original capacitors in these radios going back to the beginning. So I have not replaced those. So um, uh, the moral of the story of these, if you have these, you have to use these radios or they're going to go bad. I use these every day. I turn on my DC power supply over here and they come on and they stay on as long as the power supply is on. And they, when I go to bed, they they go off, but they get used several hours every day. So these are excellent radios and they're uh, available, used. Um, and when I do a shootout on HF, I have R75 here. I got R8600 here. I got R7300. I do a shootout on HF and the R71 sounds the best. And it, I, I got to say the sensitivity is, is the top of all the other two. So this one is really, really a good radio to have. And I'll just, I'm just gonna keep using it till it won't work anymore. All right, well, here's the little comparison sheet for you to pause on um, for the 25 year review on these two radios. Um, these were excellent investments to get these. And uh, I'm just gonna keep them until they just won't go anymore or I won't go anymore. One or the other is gonna happen first. All right, thanks to everybody, I'm out.